There's a whole lot going on with this running shoe. It's the Addy Star CS. Let's run with it. Now, before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. This is the Adisar CS, and that CS stands for Cushioned Support. Essentially, this is the stability version of the Adisar, which came out in late 21. You can get a little bit of a different midsole and a different upper. This $160 Ultramax Cushion Stability Road Running Shoe comes in at a weight of 11.2 ounces, which is, yes, definitely on the heavier end of things. However, for that weight, we get a ridiculous amount of midsole, 37 millimeters in the heel, 31 in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. And because there is so much cushion in the midsole, Adidas said the intent of this shoe was for stability runners who were looking for a long run shoe, a recovery day running shoe, or something for those slower efforts. The upper is a mono mesh with pretty good ventilation in the toe box. I was actually surprised with how breathable it was in that area. The rest of the upper is gonna be a little bit hotter just because of how many structural elements there are. We do get some significant rubber or plastic overlays that add a little bit more structure to the upper as well. And as a fun side note about the upper, it's made partially from recycled materials and ocean plastic. The tongue is non-gusseted, incredibly plush and soft, very comfortable, and just extremely big. It's a massive tongue. This thing is absolutely huge. And while it was comfortable, I think it's just a little bit overbuilt and kind of cumbersome. The lacing system is quite interesting. It's asymmetrical in the fact that it's shifted slightly over to the lateral side. I believe they did this to give you more medial support. Essentially, the medial side has two layers of mono mesh, so it kind of wraps up a little bit higher on the medial side of your foot, giving you a little bit more support in that region. Now, as far as the lacing system itself goes, it's incredibly robust, very thick, and you you have these two sections on both the lateral and medial side kind of fold over and then give you another internal liner inside that mono mesh for kind of like an extra internal cage that wraps around your foot and reinforcement on the top of the laces. And as far as the lockdown fit and comfort of the upper goes, it fit true to size, was extremely comfortable, and I felt very connected to this shoe. A lot of premium materials here that are very robust, you feel very locked in. The only one minor gripe I'll say is it feels slightly overbuilt, um, and then outside the toe box, it's not the most breathable. Moving on to the midsole, there's just a whole lot going on here. We'll start with the back of the shoe with this dark gray foam that extends partway up the lateral side, wraps around, and comes up on the medial side. This is basically a giant clip of foam that extends and sits on top of the rest of the midsole, and they call this the support frame. This is basically what gives you your guidance a little bit on the lateral side, and then it extends up on the medial side to keep your foot from rolling in. And sitting just below that is the repetitor foam, which is the white foam seen here. It makes up most of the midsole. Now, this is going to be a slightly more firm, highly cushioned experience. It's not super soft, not super bouncy and squishy, um, which is quite nice. And I think you need that in a stability shoe because you don't want your foot kind of sliding around. And there is no ground feel. It is a nice, highly cushioned experience. It's just not super uh, lively or energetic. It just has a nice level of impact protection and cushion. And then in the middle of the midsole, we get something called an energy drive, which is a small plastic strip that kind of acts like a plate. Now, it's not a full plate. It's not a carbon fiber plate. It's a small strip of plastic. I'll throw a picture on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But what this does is it stiffens up the midsole, allows you to really notice and feel that rocker geometry. You can actually see this energy drive plastic plate, whatever you want to call that plastic strip. If you flip the shoe over and look in this large gap, and you can actually see the Adidas energy drive. I will say you do slightly feel that small plastic strip right below your forefoot. It's essentially just the liner, maybe a little bit of foam. I took the liner out, I couldn't see the energy drive. So I think it's just the liner, a little bit of foam, and then that plastic energy strip. So it, you notice it there, it's not a deal breaker, it's just not the best sensation. So I hope they maybe put a little bit deeper in the midsole or add a little bit more foam on top next year. I also want to mention that the midsole and the shoe itself is rather rigid. This thing does not want to bend, flex, or twist, which helps with the stability experience and the rocker geometry feeling. You do get a little bit of bend at the, the front of the shoe and the toe box, but overall this is a rather rigid experience. You really do notice the rocker geometry, and I think this feature is what makes the shoe pleasant to run in. It just kind of rolls you along, has a very smooth experience with all of that cushion underfoot. Felt very nice, and I think it's part of the reason why the shoe, even though it is at 11.3 ounces, it doesn't feel like 11.3. It feels relatively light on foot, and I think that's partially because of how smooth it is while you're running. 
And as far as the stability goes, this shoe is extremely stable. You got a really wide platform and it feels like your foot really does sit lower in the midsole, even in the forefoot. You have like mini foam walls on both sides that keep you well contained. And then as you move to the back, you have that support frame, which again is that uh, gray foam that wraps around and then on the medial side. I will say you do have a little bit of arch support, nothing too intrusive, but you do have some noticeable arch um, support in that region. As far as the outsole is concerned, we get a really wide base with flat waisted geometry through the midfoot, provides a really nice stable platform to run on. As far as the rubber coverage go, we get a ton of continental tire rubber here. I think this is pretty darn optimal. Grip was great and there's quite a bit of rubber here, which is probably why the shoe weighs so much, but I think you'll get a lot of life out of this outsole and the grip was superb. We also get a decoupled heel at the back of the shoe with a large gap that runs through the middle. This allows your foot to kind of sink in and pop out as you go through your stride. So those are all the basic facts. Let's talk about what I liked and what I didn't like so much about the Adi Star CS. The first positive for me is the build quality and I think overall longevity of this shoe. It's built like an absolute tank. Yes, it's heavy, but that weight gets you a lot of premium solid materials. The upper feels very nice. It feels very well constructed and you get a ton of continental tire rubber coverage on the outsole. The next positive for me was that the shoe just rolls you along with a very stable experience, very smooth shoe. Now, again, the midsole isn't super soft, squishy, it doesn't have a ton of energy return, but felt very nice and you don't feel the ground at all. It's perfect for those easy miles. The last positive for me was the lockdown and comfort of the upper. I felt very connected to this shoe. You actually get four eyelets at the top, four customized lacing options. The breathability in the toe box was quite good. The rest of the shoe may be a little bit hot, but I was actually surprised with how breathable that mono mesh was in the front of the shoe. And it was just a pleasant, comfortable experience. Felt very connected, especially with that robust lacing system. However, the shoe wasn't perfect and there are a couple things that can probably be improved. The first thing I would probably change is I would move that energy drive plastic strip a little bit lower in the midsole or maybe just put some additional foam on top. You notice it under your foot. It's not a huge deal breaker. It's just kind of not the best experience. The next thing I would probably change is the tongue. It's very comfortable, very plush. It just feels out of place. Thing is absolutely massive. I think if they pair it back a little bit, make it a little bit more refined, maybe a little bit more breathable, I think that would go a long way. And the last thing I'll say is yes, this is a slightly heavier shoe at 11.3 ounces. However, it really doesn't feel like it just because you have that smooth rocker geometry and you feel very connected to the shoe itself. It does, however, feel large. It's just a large shoe. Not so much clunky, but just large. It's very voluminous. This thing is absolutely massive. I think that partly has to do with like their style choices or the design choices here. So maybe if they edit it in, make it a little bit more streamlined, a little bit less bulky, I think that'll go a long way in providing, a, I guess, a more consistent or a lighter experience. Well, that concludes my review. Let me know in the comments what you think of this massive stability shoe. I'm Ryan from Ryan's Riding Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.